Working with a customer point of sale. Whether you're selecting an existing customer or you're finding a new customer, both can be done at point of sale. The Find Customer button will allow you to do both of these. We're going to start by selecting an existing customer. To select an existing customer, you can use last name, first name, phone number, or email address. If you want it defined by a city or state, you can hit the More button and get to a full customer filter to search for the customers. In most cases, we won't need to use that. Last name, first name, and email address are all starts with fields, which means when you type a couple letters here, it is going to search for anything that starts with that. You can use any combination to search and narrow down your results. The phone number field is a little different. It is a contains field. So if you type four numbers, it's going to find any phone number that has those four numbers in order in the phone number. So if you ask for the last four digits, it will show you only phone numbers that have those four numbers in a row. I'm going to search by customer by typing the first couple letters of their last name and the first letter of their first name. Under the search fields, you have a results and you have a contact results. Results is going to let you say whether you want to see every customer, which is individual names, or only couple names. So if you have a customer record that has a husband and wife connected, if you choose individual, you will see them both and you'll be able to choose either or for the receipt. If you choose couple's name, it will have both of their names on the receipt. In the background, when you choose couple, the sale will always show on the history of the primary contact. Contact results, preferred only, will bring up only the preferred contact methods. Phone, email, and address will allow for one preferred for each of those. If you say show all, it will show every combination of contact for that customer. To bring up a list of the customers that match what I've typed, I'm going to click OK. When I click OK, every customer whose last name starts with PR and first name starts with L will show up. You'll also notice that even if a customer has the matching, but they do have a spouse, the spouse will show up on the list also. If my customer is here, I'm going to select them, and then I'm going to hit the Select button. My customer will then be added to the sale. If I was adding a new customer, or I wasn't sure if this was a customer, if I was to go in and type, it's always best to look to see if the customer's in there before adding them. So if I type a last name and I type their first name and I click OK, it's still going to search. But you'll notice that I did not have any customer that matches. So to add Mary to the system, at the bottom of the list, there is an add button. When I hit add, it brings over anything that I typed in the search, so it starts me off there, and allows me to enter more information. So if I wanted to put in their cell phone number, their street address, their zip code, and if I did want to put spouse information, I can. Anytime you put spouse information into an ad, it will add a second record, but link them together. If there is more information I wanted to collect that is not on the screen, I can hit the more button and I can use this more screen to add a company, any of my other keys fields that I have in there, my referred by, notes, more fields than are available on the quick add. Either way, I add this. When I click OK, it will require me to enter any information that I've marked as required. So I have email required to add a customer. If I didn't want to put it in or the customer didn't want to give it to me is more likely the situation, I can hit bypass. As long as I have the security to bypass, I can enter my ID and password and tell the system why I'm bypassing. Customer declined. 
When I click OK, it will now let me add the customer without an email. But anytime you use the bypass, it will come up with declined to let you know that the customer declined the email address and that is why it's not there. We're gonna switch back to our existing customer. Whenever you bring up an existing customer at point of sale, the edge is gonna try and let you know as much as it can about this particular customer. So in the box here, we see their preferred contacts, their preferred address, their preferred phone number, their preferred email address. The other thing you may see is birthdays and anniversaries if you have them in the system. Depending on your system options, it will only show birthdays within a certain number of days. Now my system is set for 45 days, so it shows any occasion that happens 45 days in the future or 45 days in the past. So it's going to come up with a birthday and an anniversary. So we know that Lenny has a birthday coming up June 4th, and we also know that Lenny has an anniversary that just passed on March 1st. The other thing we find out very quickly about a customer is what kind of customer they are. Underneath this box, there is a group of six numbers. Each number represents something. The first number is the number of items that this customer has ever purchased. The next number is the total price of all the items that they purchased. The next number is the number of transactions that have happened. So this doesn't include just items sold, but payments, pickups, appraisals, things like that. The next number is the total amount they've tendered so far. This number includes taxes and any payment they've given you. So even if they've bought a gift certificate and no money has been applied to inventory, it still shows on this screen. The next number is the average purchase. So this is the average sale amount for this particular customer. The last number here is the date the customer's added. That will show in month and year. So we know that Lenny became a customer in March of 88. What else happens when you bring an existing customer up a point of sale is certain things are going to highlight to let you know that there's things behind it. So the notes edit button will highlight if they have notes on their record. The wish list button will highlight if either the primary or the spouse has items on a wish list. Appointments will highlight if you have appointments set up for this customer. If you are using the rewards program, the rewards button will be highlighted and it will also let you know the total amount of rewards they have to use. The next set of buttons that will highlight are make payment. If they have anything they can make a payment on, it will show up here. You can also have the number of payments show below. So Lenny has 44 things that are existing that he can make payments on. Pick up finish. Any job that is done that can be picked up will show here. Also, any layaway will show up here because it can be picked up at any time. Just like under the payments, it will show you the number of jobs that can be picked up. Also, anytime there's an existing transaction that is pending, you can also cancel that transaction by using the cancel order. If Lenny had no open transactions, none of these buttons would be highlighted. There are two more buttons that can actually highlight, and that would be store credit and gift certificate. So if they had a gift certificate or if they had a store credit, those two buttons down here in the bottom left where it shows the tenders would be highlighted. So whenever you choose an existing customer, again, the edge is gonna to try to tell you as much as it can about that customer.